So as you could probably tell from the title of this video, I'm gonna be taking this live edge slab of hard maple and turning it into a cutting board. Now, I already have a cutting board video on my channel. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. The goal of this video is one, to maybe address some of those questions that I got on that video, and two, uh, I'm gonna be working with a live edge slab, so it's a little bit different when it comes to breaking down and milling the, the lumber, and I'll go over each one of those steps along the way. So, let's jump into it. So the first thing that I need to do is I want to get one of these edges flat and also remove the bark. And I can do both of those things using my track saw. So luckily one of these edges, the bark is kind of just peeling off. So I'm going to rip that off and then use my track saw to get a nice straight edge all the way down because then I will use that edge when I take it over to the bandsaw later on to cut it down to some smaller strips. Also, you don't want to just take one pass here all the way through the thickness of your slab. It might just put a lot of work on your saw. So do it in two to three passes and just lower the blade a little bit each time until you have a nice clean cut all the way through. So when all is said and done, I want this cutting board to be about 16 inches long and 12 inches wide. Now it needs to be 12 inches wide because that's the maximum width that my planer can handle. So my next step is I'm going to measure out probably like 17, 18 inches or so, just to give me some wiggle room later on. And then I'm going to cut this slab into some pieces with my jigsaw, just so it's a little bit easier for me to handle in the shop. It's also worth mentioning that this slab has been in my workshop acclimating to the climate for the last two to three months. And previous to that, it was drying at a sawmill for a year and a half. So I know that these are good to work with. Uh, highly recommend picking up one of those little moisture meters if you're unsure, just to make sure that the moisture content is at a level to which you can actually work with the slabs. That said, the next step is that I'm gonna take these over to my bandsaw and just salvage uh, the wood that I can actually use for the cutting board because as you can see, um, the slab was cut in the middle of the tree and I can't actually use that for my cutting board. So I'm gonna avoid all the sap wood, um, get all the pieces that I need, and then we'll take them over to the jointer and the planer and get them all ready for the glue up. One of the most popular questions among beginner woodworkers is, what is the difference between a planer and a joiner? And which one do I buy first? Well, a joiner is gonna make a face or an edge of the board flat, and that's it. And another question is, well, once I get one of those faces flat on the jointer, can I just flip the piece over and run it through again? You can, and it will make that face flat, but the problem is it's not gonna be parallel to the other face of the board. So what we're gonna do now is run all the pieces through the jointer. We're gonna take them over to the planer just to make the other side flat and parallel, and then take them back to the jointer to square up one of the edges, and then finalize everything over at the table saw. Need to get a better stand for that. And then to answer the other question is, which one do I buy first, a jointer or a planer? And short answer to that is a planer because you can get away with flattening boards without a jointer using a sled on your planer and using some shim. So uh, if you only had to pick, I would definitely go with the planer because it's more versatile and uh, you don't necessarily need a, a jointer to get one side nice and flat. So 
So I'm making an edge grain cutting board. So that just means that the edge of the board is gonna be facing up. So whatever I set my fence to on the table saw will ultimately be the thickness of the cutting board. I'm gonna go for an inch and three quarters uh, because I know that I'm gonna take it to the planer later on and it will remove some material. And I just want this to be a nice, thick, sturdy cutting board. There were two questions that popped up quite frequently in my last cutting board video. And the first one was, what clamps did I use? Now these are bar or pipe clamps or whatever you wanna call them, but ultimately uh, you buy these little red pieces off of Amazon, I'll leave a link to them down below, and they attach to whatever size three quarter inch uh, pipes that you wanna get. So in my case, I think these are two feet and I attach them here and they work perfectly for cutting boards. But if you're gluing up a you know a dining room table, for example, and you need them to be a lot longer, uh, you can just get different pipes and move them from this to the other one. So they're very convenient and they're pretty inexpensive compared to um, some other clamps that are out in the market. And the second question that I got was about the glue. Now I only use Type On 3 for my cutting board specifically because it is waterproof and food safe. You can go to their website and um, they talk about it a little bit more detail. So uh, definitely Type On 3 for cutting boards. So that being said, let's glue this up, put it in some clamps and then wait a little bit and then we can move on to the next step. All right, it's been a couple hours. The glue is all dry. So I'm gonna take it out of the clamps and then we are gonna send it through the planer to get both of the faces and the sides nice and flat. And then it's on to uh, sanding and finishing. All right, so one little decorative touch that I like to add to my cutting boards is putting a chamfer around all of the edges. And this is just a 45 degree chamfer bit on my trim router. So I'll run it all the way along, setting it to a depth that I think looks right. And then it's onto some sanding. All right, let's talk about my sanding process for a quick second. So I'll start off at 120, I'll go to 220, and then after that, I'll spray the entire board with water to raise the little wood fibers. After that is completely dry, I'll sand again at 120 up to 220, and then I'll hand sand at 320 before I start applying the finish. Also highly recommend using one of these guys because it comes in really handy when you need to sand the chamfers because you don't really want to use your random orbit sander for that. Up until recently, I've just used the standard mineral oil that you get from one of the big box stores, and it's okay, but it's just a tad bit underwhelming. So I ended up buying this hydrating wood serum in this all-in-one wood conditioner from a company called Bumble Shoots. They're local to me and um, very impressed. Not only does it hydrate these cutting boards and rejuvenates them and protects them, but it also smells really nice. So I reached out and I asked if they wanted to partner up with me in this video and they were very happy to do so. So we're gonna be doing two things. The first one being a, uh, a giveaway. We're gonna be giving away the Bumble Shoots Ultimate Wood Care Kit, which consists of some soap for cleaning and washing your cutting boards, oil for rejuvenation, and the wax to protect it. And second, uh, they've supplied me with a discount code for any item in their store. So if you decide to go check them out and you wanna purchase something yourself, use casual10 uh, as the discount code at checkout and you will receive 10% off of your order. So thanks Bumble Shoots. 
And if you've enjoyed this video so far and you want to support my channel, all you need to do is subscribe if you're not already, hit that thumbs up button, and leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. So all that being said, let's go ahead and finish this board, and then we'll add some feet, and then we can call this project complete. Mm -hmm.